Hello everybody, truck driver Sean here. I am standing here with Gus from What's up, guys? Gorilla Guitars and now Constantine Guitars, which is his namesake. His name is actually Constantine. We just call him Gus because we're lazy. And it sounds cool, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I've only ever known him as Gus. <laughs> That's true, actually, yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know you had a real name. I thought that was your name. Well, you know, when I started Gorilla uh, over 20 years ago, I sort of stayed a little bit back in the shadows. You know, a lot of people didn't know who I was and stuff. So uh, I sort of just went through the Gorilla moniker, you know, but now it's, I've decided, you know, the past couple of years to really show myself a little bit more uh, as, as the creator and the, uh, the maker of all these uh, great guitars. And you're a good guy. I'm not saying that just because you're on camera. I've said that to you off camera. Thank you. That's he really true. is a good guy. Sometimes, again, sometimes. Now you're always a good dude. Um, again, I know if you watched my gorilla segment, you got to hear me say it again. If you need any questions answered, this is who you actually talk to, and he's a good dude. So yes. get a hold of him if you have any questions on the Constantine stuff. Um, he actually has a reason why he did this to go in line with the gorillas, which is they're made exactly by him, but they have two different purposes pretty much yeah so uh explain constantine so you know i've been building guitars for such a long time and uh you know i love building heavy metal guitars i mean that's where i started with though that's my main influence uh heavy metal music but before i entered into metal i mean we all had a base right so you know I, i'm almost i'm 49 so 1980 to 1989 wise i was listening to Dawkin. Uh, Poison, uh, Rat, uh, all the all the, the, the California metal band, uh, hard rock bands that were coming out. So I, I start my influence started from there. In reality, you know, and uh, I just said to myself this year I wanted to do something different uh, that allows me to explore other body types a little bit outside of Gorilla Guitars because Gorilla Guitars is, is very metal, you know, pointy guitars, uh, crazy finishes. Uh, you know, seven, eight strings. So I wanted to go back a little bit to more of the style of the, you know, the Charvel era, Strat type guitars that were prominent when I started playing guitar. And Constantine allows me to do that. And I wanted to just try something really different, uh, neck-wise, shape-wise, look-wise, a guitar that can be used by a blues guy, a rock guy, even a jazz guy. I wanted to sort of allow myself to just, you know, explore that territory, you know? I think yeah. it's time, I think it's, and if you're a metal guy and you just don't like the pointy guitars and you like to just have a little more meat in your hands, you get a little more control with that dig. If you're a metal guy, you don't have to run away from these. They're no. they're going to serve you extremely well. Yes. And uh, if I was going to go out, you know, to, to copy Fender, like why would I do that? Like like people could just get a Fender, you know. Like I wanted to do that guitar my way. The way I think it should feel and play with some cool aesthetics, you know, they're all neck throughs, there's no bolt-ons, like it's, you know, you don't find these guitars, uh, Fenders or Charvel's uh, neck through, you can, but it's, they're rare. So I did a lot of stuff that I do in Gorilla that's implemented in the DNA of Constantine. So that guitar has all the benefits of that 20 years of, of experience, but done in a way that it's cool, it's comfortable, and it can be used across various different styles of music. And they feel really comfortable. They're not super heavy either. I've had this on me, what, well, 15 minutes now? 10, yeah, 15 absolutely. minutes? Absolutely. It's not exhausting, and I don't have guitars on me very often. I'm a soft, grown ass man. So <laughs> I complain a lot about the weight of guitars, that I'm old. But uh, it feels good, it plays good. I played them yesterday, absolutely. Real, real yeah. briefly. Great playing guitars. And now uh, they all sort of kind of have like a little theme. Absolutely. Like this one here is the Mr. Scary. The Mr. Scary, right? So. When I started playing guitar, I had obviously influences, and some of my major influences were George Lynch, Steve Vai, Warren D. Martini. A lot of these guys influenced my playing when I was younger, and I and I love these guys. So what I said to myself is, I wanted to do a little tribute to them, something that would be cool that sort of says, "Hey, man, thank you for inspiring me back then to play music and actually." ending me up coming into, falling into the music guitar building business, which was what happened. So this is the Mr. Scary. We also have a Warren D. Martini one. And we also have a, a Steve Vai one, which was my real first guitar, which was a gem blue floral pattern uh, six string. 
which I loved and which I ended up selling, which I regret to this day that I sold and I cry over it every Wait, night. I did the same thing with my N4, my yeah. Nodal Benton car guitar. There you go, so right? I needed money. My, my wife at the time was sick and I, I had to let it go. Yeah. I had to make a decision for the family Absolutely. versus my, my love for the guitar. And, Absolutely. Yeah. It's a tough one. What's, what's tough is when you see what they sell for now. Yeah. Uh, and when I sold my N4, because that's what they were selling for before. Ah, my butt hole gets sore every time oh, I think about man. it. Well, I don't want to cry now. It's, uh, yeah, it's yeah, no, right. tough, you know? Same thing with you. Absolutely. Like, you probably sold it for, what, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300? I think less than that. I think and now was... you could get two twenty-five. I would. Easy. It's not the money. I don't care about the money. It's just I wish I had it, because it was just like my yeah. first real guitar that I got that I loved. I mean, the, the, those guitars influenced me because they were different. They were artistic. They looked different. They weren't the same. And as you see in my what I build, I try to achieve the same thing, the guitars that don't look the same, that are not like the regular guitars you find out there from everybody else. Yeah. And, and that's what really I love about guitar, because it, it's an artist, it's an artistry. You know, it's, 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 you're creating something that's unique, the finish is unique, everything is unique, and it, it just looks super cool. It's funny you mentioned that, because I, I, it, it really, I didn't put it together until it just popped in my head when you said that. Today's signature models of guitar players if you see one sitting on the thing, you wouldn't know it's their signature. You'd have no idea. They're not unique to that player. They're just basically, they slap their name on it to change a pickup or something. Pretty much, yeah. You know, whereas back in the day, like when Warren came out and put like that really crappy looking sticker of the yes. skull on the his skull, yeah. And, that, and that cheesy little drip of blood. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and it looked so stupid, but no one else had it. It used it all the time. And you, if you, you'd never see that. And then when he did the signature, you didn't have to put it, it was Warren's guitar. Everybody knew it was Warren's guitar. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, and the same thing with Steve I. Absolutely. You knew a gem when you saw a gem. Yeah, absolutely. Even though it was an Ibanez, it was an RG shape. Yeah, You same knew guitar. it was Steve I's guitar. Absolutely. And today you don't get that. Like, you, you can see Tim Hansen's, who's probably arguably one of the biggest up and coming guitar players on the planet. He has a tree of life on it, but they also put out a prestige, like four or five prestiges that have it on it. So how the hell do you know it's his guitar? Yeah. You don't. It looks exactly like the prestiges. I think it might be a trend of today's players maybe don't want to stand out that much with their guitars. I mean, I, I think companies are just lazy. That too. It's cost effective. It's uh, It takes a lot of work to do these finishes. Uh, maybe the market is not there. Who knows? Uh, but you're right. There is a sort of blase cover over everything that doesn't really pop out anymore. Well, they tried to make it probably because it's... Back in the day, it wasn't... They didn't worry about making it palatable for everybody. They made it palatable for their artist. Pretty much, yeah. Now it's like, okay, yeah, you got your guitar, but we need to make sure we can sell it to 100,000 people. Yeah. So they're not able to do exactly what they want to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, even ESP, like, you look at theirs, like, I was just up there the other day, they have some amazing looking guitars, but there's a couple of those signature series. I didn't even know they were signature series. Yes. I was like, oh, that's a great version of that guitar. They like, I like how they added the trim to this one. And that's all they did. They just they added some trim. That's it true. was the same exact guitar as the other one, but it just or it a had different trim. pick guard or something. Or and they charged an extra thousand dollars for it. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Kind of bullshit, isn't it? Well, it is what it is. You know, I mean, they have the the the, the prestige. They have the the power and. Uh, they charge what they want, you know, it's really, uh, yeah. that's how it is. I'm not a buy one. But, uh, but we, show, the, show everybody got, how it sounds, man. Yeah, uh, this has, it's the, it's the door, George Lynch. So it has the Screaming Demon, which are really hard to find. Yes. They're not easy. And you also have the Mini Demon, right? The uh, Little Screaming. The Little Screaming. The Little Screaming. So, uh, I don't play on the neck pickup, but I will show you what it sounds like. And, uh, unfortunately, I only know the Warren Demartini Riff Center in Trump <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to fake it.
landed pretty cool. You rocked out pretty hard on that one. <laughs> All right, so the deck pickup, you get, it should, if I remember how this acts, you're gonna get a really good bite. It's gonna have like a really good, it's almost like if you wanna play blues, you can just have everything dialed up to 100, but if you cut it back, you get a nice buttery, like a spanky thing, good for noodling, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. nice and bright but if you just roll that volume back just a little bit I mean we're going back and we're getting those sounds from the uh, early 80s you know we got yep. the screaming demon we got the uh, Seymour Duncan distortion we also have the exciter pickup from Seymour Duncan that's brand new and uh, we have the little 59 and the quarter pounder and the Warren Martin, which always sounds phenomenal great single coil pickup uh, yeah. So we're going for that sound from from that from that era, that period. All right. So I'm gonna do it real quick. Um, as you know, he's already pointed out that this is a, a Warren D. Martini inspired. Uh, this this is uh, George Lynch. This is scary. This is scary. He also has the Steve Vai, but he also has some that are made for like the guys that don't want the super flashy finish. Right. But yet they're still interesting enough that you're like, oh, I get that. So you yeah, have this red one right here, which I know you, I'm never gonna be able to show you what it does on camera or by pictures. You have to see it in person. If you look at it differently, it goes from like a blood red to a crimson red, and you get kind of, it looks different no matter which way you look at it. it it's incredible. Yeah, why don't you give it a try though? That has a hip shot. I know you, you, you like that too. Yeah, I can actually drop D in. That's right. right. I'll be right back. Okay, so here is that red one I was mentioning. As you can see, it's just, it's got a matte finish. It's very metallic in nature, but it's black. It, it is a matte finish. Like I said, if you turn it, of course, you're not gonna see it in there. But what you can see is, as you all know, if you've seen any of the guitars that I, I have made for myself to have plain necks, this right here is the coolest thing that some of the builders are doing now. And it's a very, very select few that are doing it. A lot of people say, oh, it's an accident. They made an accident. No, this is done on purpose because it just aesthetically looks amazing. And if you don't think so, well, you're a dick. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Well, I personally like it. The reason why they might think that when you see other builders where they cut it off and it's a straight line. Yeah. Because you have to be talented with the gun to control the spray level and make sure that you're not over spraying when you do this. So even if the, the people might think it's easier, it's not easier. It's easier to put a piece of tape and just cut it off and then paint right over it. Oh, I but I think it looks good. I think it looks cool. I do too. And I you love know? it. With Whenever a nice little a shape. Neck, that's it. If I have a bare neck done on a guitar, that's the way I always ask to have it done. Absolutely. I like the way it looks. Yeah. Yeah. I bought a guitar many, many years ago from a company we won't talk about. And they did that with theirs and that's what sold me on it. I know it's a dumb thing to sell you on a guitar, but I loved it, and I still think of it the same way today. When I see that, I get happy. Again, you have hip shot hardware, Graph Tech nut. This is the... Uh, this is the Seymour Duncan Distortion. The Seymour Duncan Distortion. With a little 59. And a little 59. Yeah. So it's a uh, rip on this thing a little bit. And this thing is, uh, street price is 2000 bucks. Wow. 2000 bucks is a good fucking deal. Yeah. Good deal, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm in drop D. I dropped the D.
they're just great playing guitars. And I will say, for having for having a non-oiled bare neck, a lot of people are always like, ah, I don't like it when it's not oiled. This is really smooth, like insanely smooth. It, it has a sheen on it, which I imagine you must have put like a little layer of something on it. Well, this is a zero gloss, I call it. It's a, it's a new product I've been using for the past year. It's fen it's phenomenal. It sounds. It feels really good. Feels great. Looks great. Uh, even though some other guys do a satin, you kind of see a, like a thickness to it, and it's kind of like a feels it has a bit of a shine to it. But this is really, 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 really sexy finish. Yeah, and it feels it, it feels good in your hand. Like if you're gonna be doing like the strutting thing or the blues Absolutely. thing, where you're running your thumb across Absolutely. the top. You're gonna slide on it really easily, and of course, you know the fret works fucking phenomenal. It's got a little bit of meat on it, like you said, a little yeah, bit of. A it's, little, it's like an in between. It's like it's not a baseball bat, no. and it's not a sissy-handed one. No, it's like absolutely. great, like the old guitars were in the '80s. It's I, got, it's I wanted that feeling. Want to dig. Yeah, exactly. I didn't want to put a gorilla neck on this and say it's different because that would just defeat the purpose. Not only that, like this right here, like I did it earlier, and it just sounds so good. Absolutely. A lot of people don't realize a lot of how. The guitar is going to behave in your hand. It's like how your hand is attached to that instrument. Yep. And when you want to, you want to have like that really good bend, like that really nasty bend that digs in. You got to have meat in your hands. To... You don't get that with the necks because you can't, you can't anchor yourself in there to get that kind of dig. So it lends itself really good to it. It just. I don't know they play phenomenal, but then again, everything you make plays phenomenal. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I'd love to see you build something that's not playable. Uh, I don't think I can do that. I don't think it's possible. Well, I try my best. Everybody should have a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I can, I can try that. I'll make a, <laughs> shoot, I'll make a baseball bat uh, neck. Uh, actually, I'll make it, you can use it for baseball, you know, so. <laughs> play guitar while you're waiting to go to the bat. Yeah, exactly. That actually would be fucking hilarious. If you can find a baseball player that plays guitar, <laughs> they're in the things that are like practicing swing, they're up there like playing Metallica riffs and yeah, shit. They get up there and they, that actually be hilarious. Be hilarious, yeah. <laughs> but no, sincerely, listen. Um, I appreciate everybody that you know buys my stuff and uh, supports me. And uh, it's uh, it's been 20 years I've been doing this, so uh, I try and with every guitar, every build, I try and do the best that I can, and uh, to give somebody like something really unique because I know you guys play with it, create music, create content with it. So I'm really proud of the fact that my stuff is being used out there, you know. And, 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 Played and, and all the good words that people say and, and about it, and it's really, it really feels, uh, makes me feel special. And as somebody who owns Gorilla Guitars, I'm gonna say that if you ever have a problem when you buy Gorilla Guitars, whether it's two weeks after you buy it, a year after you own it, if you have a problem with it, you don't have to sit there and go, ah, fucking ah, nah. no, get a hold of Gus. The dude takes care of his work. Granted, if you threw it off a second room balcony, you're probably gonna pay to have it fixed. Look, if it's something that was due to manufacturing or something, you guys will arrange something, trust me. I've seen him fix something that sat on someone's desk for a year that they complained about. Oh, yeah. And Everybody. all he asked was to have the damn thing sent to me. He actually asked multiple times, please send me the guitar so I can make it right. Please send me the guitar. And, right. you know, how many builders do you know out there that are begging to have something sent back because of a minor little flaw? He did. And he did fix it, and it's a phenomenal guitar that gets used all the time. And I upgraded his tuners too. Huh? And I upgraded the tuners too at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, he, he updated <laughs> the tuners too. He ended up with a much better guitar when he got it back. That's right. That's right. And uh, that's what's awesome is you're not just buying an instrument on a random Wednesday and go, I got a fucking sick guitar mailed to me. I got it. Uh, and look at this. Now you've got a guitar that you can actually keep for years and years and years. And if you have, even you know, if you just need to have it touched up, I'm sure that you guys can fix something that you'd. If you had a guitar, you touch it up. Yeah, well, absolutely, absolutely. Normal fee is time is worth money, sure. but he can help you keep your guitar alive. You know. Well, look at your smoke, uh, the MSR6. It's uh, it's a tank, you know. It's still it's still going strong, right? Hell yeah. So I, I have a I got my first one off you five years five ago. Years ago dude. Yeah, that thing has seen some mileage. That's what I'm saying. It's been in the truck. It's yeah. been everywhere, all around the country. It's beat the snot, yeah. but it stays in tune. That's it a, sounds incredible. <laughs> it plays incredible. They're built for warfare. Yeah, that's why. Literally. Yeah. And I love the thing. It, I use it all the time. I still use it all the time. So, like I said, I don't get paid to use them. I use them because I choose to use them. And honestly, you want a decent guitar built in North America? Yes, it's Canada. It's North America. We are a country. <laughs> we are your neighbors. 
they, they might be like our, our cousin that might like to window bus every once in a while, but, you know, they're good people. And he does source the best materials. He, and if you watch him, follow him on Instagram, on Facebook, follow Gorilla Guitars. He puts all kinds of stuff up there. He's not hiding nothing from anybody. You know, and you'll see that he's using top quality components. He's putting the time in to make sure things are as perfect as they can be. Is it going to be 100% perfect every time? Sometimes things happen, but I'd say now you got stuff dialed in enough where things are showing up pretty top notch. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Especially that, that, that telly I got. Oh my God. <laughs> that thing is so goddamn good. You got a nice inlay too. Yeah, yeah. His inlay, if you have the extra money, definitely, you know, tell him, like, bro, do a sick inlay. His, his inlay work is just above what anybody else does. It's so good. And it's creative too, like there's things in my inlay. It's really interesting. It actually looks like, I don't know, like toxic sludge, kind of. It's interesting. Every time I look at it, I see something different. It's amazing. Anyhow, thank you, Gus, for giving me cool, your man. time this morning. I know you're very busy. I really doing appreciate business it. At thank, you. And, thank, uh, you, thank you for introducing me to the truck driver Sean World, all the fans yeah. out there. Keep supporting this guy. He's number one. Super nice guy, plays great, does some really cool content. Play a couple riffs? Go ahead, man. Take us out of here. You. Me? You. Oh my god. He's a it's great guitar player. He's putting me on the spot. Alright, let me try something. <laughs> I've never been the guy in the microphone before. Shred. If he was sitting down in his comfort zone, it, it, I've seen it. The dude can freaking shred. And uh, I'm kind of not embarrassed now because I, I can't I can't follow up Sean, so it's, it's impossible. Right. I'm following up me. There's two-year-olds out there playing their freaking rattle, looking out do my shit. But <laughs> great guitar player that builds guitars. You really can't do any better than that. Gus, again, thank you so much for your time. We just boxed thank that you, so bad it wasn't funny. But, uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't and matter. It's still cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're cool. It's way cooler to fuck up and laugh about it than it is to like fuck up and make pretend it didn't happen. Just saying. Unless it's marriage, fuck up every one of them you can. Anyhow, I'll catch you all in the next video. Please, any questions about Constantine guitars, band or gorilla guitars, contact this man right here. He will source you everything you need to know. All right. Have a great one. See you in the next video. Soon.